All right, you guys, got another training game up here. I think this is going to be really useful for players helping to improve. But this is an unusual one, right? Because here we've got Tony, he's rated 901, playing black against Tommy07, who's rated 1839. That's more than double Tony's rating. Okay, so um, you, you might have seen uh, one or two games from Tony before. We've had a few lessons in the past, and uh, let's dive in. Okay, so we've got E4 from Tommy, who's uh, knocking on master level. And we have the French from Lock 777777. I'll just call him Tony, I think. Okay, normal French development. And we have the French exchange. Okay, did a video on, on this yesterday. It is possible to attack. Okay, now knight to c3. He's attacking the pawn. The pawn is defended by the queen. And a quick c5. Okay, so here we are threatening to take the d4 pawn with a wing pawn and gain some pawn majority over the center. Okay, here I would definitely be tempted to, to capture because you're just improving this pawn by going from the c-file to the d-file and removing the, that pawn there. Okay, however, we have knight to f6 instead. Okay, so developing rather than pawn maneuvers. Okay, bishop e3 now. This is all right. So he's, he's seriously over defending this pawn. He's got three defenders now. And we have c takes d4. Good. Like to see that. So now the only pawn on the two central files uh, is going to be this one. The, the, this guy here is not long for this world, obviously. We have knight takes. And now knight c6. And here again, the idea is if knight takes knight, b takes. And that's now two pawns that we've improved towards the center very common basic principle in the French, but not just the French, in many other openings as well. Okay, Queen D2. So this is suggesting to me that Tommy is proposing to castle long in this situation, which is a bit odd, seeing as there's no C pawn on Tony's side of the board, right? So his king's gonna be on the C file, it's gonna be on C1 if he castles. Let's see what happens. Okay, Tony brings out bishop. Good. So we've now got two attackers, two defenders on this knight. I really want to get into the um, the habit of counting attackers and defenders very quickly. Bishop could also have come to this square, which would effectively have pinned this knight against both queen and king. That would have also been an idea. Now Tommy does go long. All right, so remember, semi-open file for black here. There's no black pawns on that file. Okay, and now Tony comes in with the knight. Okay, he's attacking the queen. Let's think about this. I mean, my first instinct there was, okay, uh, why not finish developing the minor pieces? Why not castle the king before you come in for um, a raid? Um, this king is, is on a completely open file. There are no pawns on the e-file at all, right? So I, I, for me personally, I'd, I'd want to be getting my king safe, unless there's a very clear opportunity. So let's evaluate the opportunity here. Right, we are attacking the queen. Um, the queen doesn't have an awful lot of squares to go to, right? The only piece that can take out this attacker is the knight on c3. If the knight takes, we're going to have pawn takes. And then we're going to have a knight queen and rook lined up against here. The queen currently is defended adequately. So to me, I would evaluate that as, I don't really see how it's improving black situation at this point that black is not yet castled. So I don't see enough in it for black. Okay, and we have knight takes and pawn takes, right? Now there's a kind of a risk here. I mean. Ooh, knight takes knight, and then suddenly we've got one, two, three pieces lined, against, lined up against Queenie, and only one defender in the form of the king. Okay, and that is indeed what we get. So, Tony now is going to be forced, I think, to trade queens. Yes, indeed. Okay, well, well spotted, because you've got a barrage here against the queen, right? 
the, the, the risk is knight takes queen. Or even if the queen were to move away, you've got queen to there, would force an exchange of queens anyway, and then the rook's going to come in, the king's going to have to move, and you lose a rook and pretty much lose the game. So this is now forced, okay? And that is a direct outcome of that raid that Tony launched against Tommy. Okay, rook now recaptures. And now we recapture the knight, yeah? Oh no, first we trade bishops. Okay, this is interesting. This is increasing the danger levels, okay? Not something that I would expect to see from a 900, so this is good. Okay, so this is saying, okay, well look, I see your knight is in my sights, it's there for the taking, but first, I'm gonna trade bishops and I'm gonna threaten your rook. And the rook can't move, so now, pawn takes his force, and this is going to create an isolated pawn for white, yeah? Pawn takes his forced. B takes the knight. And now we have an isolated pawn on black side as well. However, um, it's not too bad. I mean, it's opening up lines possibly for the rooks. We shall see. Now I hope to see castles. Rook d4 attacks the pawn. And now castles. Now he could have played bishop f5 here to defend the pawn. Maybe but castles instead, and we go down a pawn. So this is the first material imbalance, right? Okay, bishop f5 attacks the rook. Rook comes down now. Hmm. Not really convinced by this rook. I mean, it could kind of get itself trapped in if the bishop moves here. The bishop would like to be here as well, pinning this pawn on that rook. Um, okay, a5, nice. Aggressive. We want to bust open the pawns around the white king, and now bishop comes out. So what do we do here? Bishop g4, okay. Pawn hits, bishop retreats, pawn hits again. Bishop comes back, bishop takes, and now h takes, all right, okay. So quite, quite even at this point, although white is still down a pawn. Rook attacks c6, rook attacks e3, King defends, pawn pushes. Okay, so we're giving up another pawn here. Okay, he did have either rook coming to the sixth rank, would have defended that pawn. Rook takes pawn. Come over and attack B, but then there and takes, takes, and now king across. All right, so now the upshot is white has a 2-0 majority on the queen side, and we have three each on the king side of the board. Okay, so rook comes up now to solidify. Check, block, retreat, pawn forward. Okay, rook a2 would be tempting now. Yep. And here, yeah, so what, what you need to be thinking about now is, how can I line up two rooks against these pawns? But he's got rook across to here. It is definitely, you're gonna have your work cut out from this point, no matter who you're playing, but certainly against an 1839 rated player, okay. Uh, activating the king makes sense. F5, trying to undouble the pawns, undoubles the pawns. Okay, but that pawn is now starting to make good progress on the board, okay. Um, yep. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, these pawns are going to be overwhelming now. And that pawn B7 is going to win a rook. The king's coming across now to defend against the other one. King's coming across. Yeah, it's going to be all over. Okay, so we're down a whole rook now as well as a pawn. Um, and that looks like a resignation, I would say, at that point. Uh, White wins the game 1-0. Very, very, very good game from a 900 player. I mean, if I'd have watched that, if I'd have seen that without knowing who was playing, I'd have said that was a 1300, 1400 player. For sure. A couple of, you know, drop pawns um, that I thought maybe wasn't really uh, forced, you know. And, and I do think, I think a turning point in the game was this knight raid there. <coughs> Excuse me. This knight coming in now, I would say it was a little premature. Um, right now, material is equal. We've lost two pawns each. I would have focused on, I think, castling the king then getting the bishop maybe to here, lined up with, with there, and then think about 
probably a pawn first attack. You know, when you've got opposite opposite side castling, um, going in with the pawns makes sense. Here, if you look at the development count, we've got three for black. We've got one, two, three, four, and castled for white. Right, so white is up six three in development at this point in time. So you need to get get the king to safety, finish getting the minor pieces out. Right, then start throwing these pawns at the board. Probably a six then b5, use this bishop, use the queen, use this bishop, get both the rooks behind it, and that's the general idea. Opposite side castling, pawn storm is, is the uh, going to be your first you know natural port of call for that. Coming in with a knight this early on in the game, once you calculate it through as well, because after knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes, forcing off the queens, uh, exchange of queens is forced, it has, however, kind of rebalanced the development with the removal of all that wood. But, um, you know, this is all fairly... Pre you could have calculated that pretty much from this point. And still, at this point in the game, I mean, it's, it's very balanced. The material is equal. Um, we need to get castled. But now, White is attacking a, a loose pawn. Uh, I, I think I would have... Certainly played this, even if pawn there, come back. You've even got f5 as well, as an idea. Um, getting castled, actually, once the queens are off the board, is not so important. So even f5 here might have been a good idea. But uh, your own analysis of the game will, will show that. But super game. Super game. And to hold your nerve that well against somebody 938 points higher rated. Kudos to you, mate. Well, well done, Tony. Uh, great game. Thanks for sharing it with us. Hope you've picked up a few things as well from that. And thanks for watching. See you later.